Ah, hello. This is John Crowcroft. I'm in the computer laboratory in the University of Cambridge. And um, we're one of the partners in the HAT project. And our role is to think about crazy mad ways that new systems might work when you combine all the siloed Internet of Things that we see today into a real Internet. And the platform that we've been helping the folks at Warwick Design and the other partners in the project build various experimental components of is really uh, probably one of the most meta things we've done for a long time. So the reason it's meta is that really it's not a platform for an Internet of Things. It's a platform for an Internet of an Internet of Things. The platform really enables people to think and create and market systems of systems. This is actually a very important step because as we see the internet uh, in the last 30 years has created a world of ever increasing innovation that that's not happening in the IoT world. So what we really want to do is to fix that problem. So you're going to hear a lot about the progress we've made and the various pieces of technology. I'm just going to tell you uh, a bit about ways that you might think about uh, the way the technology might uh, lead to systems uh, innovation. So right now, uh, you may not notice, but I actually have hearing aids. I'll take one out and you can see it. This is a very nice Oticon Spirit Zest uh, piece of technology. It's a digital hearing aid. It costs about £3,000 in America. It's completely free if you need hearing aids in the UK, uh, if you're on the NHS, which is jolly good. The cool thing about it, why is it an Internet of Things enabled device? Well, in fact, I can buy a gadget. I have one somewhere lying around here somewhere over okay. here, um, which can uh, stream audio to these. So actually, they're wireless headphones, but better, they've got microphones in, and I can stream audio from them to the world. So I could actually record what's going on around me. Now, for me, that's not a very sensible thing to do, but imagine I was a, a bit older and I didn't have a good memory. I could keep this as a, a system for keeping track of what I'd said to whom, uh, when and where, and that might be very handy for recall and practicing recall, so it would be a very nice health gadget. I could also build apps that warned me about things, so for example that somebody's at the front door, and even with these I can't actually hear the doorbell go, but I could easily build an app, there you go, ding, um, mm -hmm. which actually warns me that somebody's ringing the front doorbell directly to my hearing aid. That would be a very simple thing to do, as long as we had an open system that allowed us to connect such things and figure out how to make money out of such a useful thing, for example. So you can think, you can think of all kinds of ways you can connect stuff together. I have a very nice product which you can buy today, which is uh, uh, an internet of things but it's siloed it's a zigbee network that connects my light bulbs in the room i'm sitting in to uh, a smartphone there you go um, i've just uh, turned the light up but i can set up an app that when email arrives for me if the email is from somebody i like and i want to sit down and chat to them uh, it will go into a nice color but if it's somebody uh, that uh, is work and it's very stressful it might go into a bright color on the other hand maybe i want to de-stress and uh, i think maybe going to uh, 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 a more calm color might be a good way of doing things. That's an easy thing to do if you have a completely open API between things. But then, how would you make money out of all these things combined? That's the real trick. How would anyone be incented to create a system that, that puts these all together? And I think, uh, basically, the idea is that we create a world in which there are no barriers to thinking of new things and then that making the very small step to gluing them together in a way that fits the market. And that's a crucial thing uh, that Irene and other people have been working on, uh, is how you create that market. But what we're also working on behind the scenes is just making sure the technology underlying this uh, enables the seamless interworking, if you like, uh, and then that, that then everything else will follow, and it's up to everyone else to, to work on that. We're not supposed to be uh, um, coming up with all the solutions ourselves. And 30 years ago, when I was involved in gluing bits of internet plumbing together, we didn't expect anything like the, the World Wide Web or Web 2.0 or social media or search, or indeed any of the uh, the two-sided markets that that, were, that drove their uh, their profits uh, so that the fact you don't pay for your email, you don't pay for your social media with money um, that targeted advertising and analytics work on it, that's jolly good. So that leads me to the last thing I just want to say, which is, uh, let's uh, turn off the brightness here a bit, just so you can uh, uh, 
see what's happening. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is that, of course, one of the big problems in the world today is privacy. And it's absolutely crucial that when we want to enable a seamless Internet of Things, uh, that uh, in the example I gave earlier, the email arrives from work from Irene saying, you must work on this document, we need it by tomorrow. And I have a big bright light that everyone up and down the street doesn't know exactly what I'm doing in the house. Um, so that, that's, uh, that's at a very simple level, but also that other people don't have access to control and actuate things in my house. That's another level. Now for each siloed current technology, there's reasonably good uh, uh, privacy control, security control. But when we want to create these markets models, uh, of how things actually are going to operate to incent massive innovation. Uh, we we need to create analytics, we need to create potential for advertising and so on, but we need to do it in a way that, that much better um, control over the user's data. So our model of this is that the user monetizes their data. We actually put their power back in the hands of the, the, the person who the data is about and, and the devices, sensors and actuators that, that, that pertain to that user. And so the user is not the product, uh, they're part of an ecosystem and that, that ecosystem uh, potentially has even more uh, ways that innovative applications can be created uh, and deployed uh, and uh, turn into money-making enterprises. So that's all I've got to say about the project and uh, so for me uh, it's probably time to put the lights out again and bye.